Uh, we're talking about X2 today. We just finished our conversation about An Open Secret, which came out a few weeks ago. But it's still, well, for us, it was like five minutes ago. Uh, it's, yeah. it like I was saying in that conversation, it really taints my view of this movie. Um, yeah. Knowing, like there's that clip of, in the documentary about Brian Singer talking with that convicted sex offender. He's like, oh, I brought him in to help me because I don't like doing this. And like he showcased him in the movie and all this stuff. And it just, even just hearing Brian Singer talk in that context yeah. just felt so creepy. You know, it, it, it just like, really it was just so like gross and like. But maybe that's what they were going for, you they, know, or maybe it just is truly that creepy. I don't know. They're definitely, every documentary, right, is he- going to be heavy handed. It's going to be, it's going to uh, try its best to appear unbiased with having a, a an extremely biased point of view. Yeah. Um. So, the, I mean, that was their goal, right? They wanted you to feel like these guys are all pedophiles for sure. There's no question. And everything they do is suspect. Yeah. While I'm not saying that is not true, that is something to be aware of when weighing the documentary, right? Like, they they did a very good job at, of being convincing about their point. Yeah. But that doesn't, that's not, doesn't, just because they're convincing doesn't mean it's factual. And I, I say that yeah, I mean, with uh, <laughs> with believing the documentary, you know what I'm saying? Like, as, 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 painful as it is to say in this situation like yeah it doesn't look good yeah. but there is two sides to every story yeah i'm not you know trying to defend the other side i i like you said i i do probably lean towards what the documentary is saying yeah <clears throat> because it, it doesn't seem like it's a lot of speculation it's it is seems like it's a lot of based on you know people that were in there and their testimony and well, they got confessions out of people and yeah, stuff. Exactly. It it gives it credibility. Yeah. But Uh, in regards to Brian Singer, that's where it's, it it gets more questionable, right? Like I didn't investigate beyond the documentary. I didn't look and see if anything has changed, but he's still working. He's still making stuff. And so it's like my, my ideal of uh like i don't know i'm trying to say the my my hope for our justice system is that it would not allow someone who is a monster to continue you know one being a monster and two not you know know, coming to justice for it all yeah and so it's like well he's still working so maybe it's not true but i know that's a big (laughs) that's a big uh a big thought problem, right? Or a big, uh, man, I'm struggling today. That's a big issue or a big, it's not a good way to think about things because that's no. how things get covered up. It's like, oh, well, yeah. no one has done anything about it. So it's probably not true. Wants- and you just, yeah. you know, live in ignorance about it all. So I, like, I recognize that, but I also still struggle, you know, with where I fall on all of it. <clears throat> but anyways x-men 2 i think let's not focus on brian singer let's not focus on the directing or the just creepiness the let's just talk about the movie well we like actually to- there's one oh. <laughs> real quick there's one thing that i got from that documentary something that i didn't notice when watching the first x-men is i did not notice that stanley was in that movie yeah i saw him i was super excited i never noticed that I didn't notice I didn't, it originally. I, I noticed. I, thought, on I kind this of thought playthrough. that started with with the Spider Man movies. Yeah. Well, I think he always, like, it was part of his thing. I don't know. Like, I think he wanted to be in them more than the directors wanted him to be in them. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I, think, I get that. I'm just saying I didn't realize it went as far back as X Men. Yeah. Think. Because if you watch them now, they make sure you know, right. This is Stanley. This yeah. is his cameo for this movie. Yeah, they didn't do that in the in that first one. It's just it's, it's, just it's an background. actual cameo. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, subtle. Yeah, very subtle. Um, but yeah, so sorry, my kids are screaming in the background. 
give them a second to figure themselves out. Kids are the worst sometimes. Most times. (laughs) I don't even know what they're crying about. (laughs) They're just like, like cats in heat. Like, Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're done. All right. X Men 2. Um, I think this one is as good as the first, but I probably give the first one the nod between these two. Uh, Yeah. No, I think the first one's better. The only thing that I think is a little bit better in this one is is kind of the complaint we had in the first one is the fighting is so slow. Yeah. I feel like it's a little bit better in this one. Yeah. As far as speed. Yeah. I well that and that opening fights. That opening sequence with Nightcrawler in the White House is really oh, good. It, I love that. Yeah. It holds up even today, you know, and it's been what, 15 years or something like that. But yeah, no the the night the nightcrawler stuff holds up really well because it's all you know not well obviously it's not all practical, but he is practical, yeah. right? It's not yeah. it's not like Spider Man, which is a CGI character in a practical world. It's nightcrawler, you know they're probably jump or jump cutting him into the, each uh, spot, but it looks yeah. great and it feels very so. quick. But uh, um, I, I was always disappointed with this version of Nightcrawler. Oh, really? Because mm-hmm. Nightcrawler, as a kid, was my favorite character. He was the one that I liked uh, the most. And uh, he felt so weak in this movie. You know what I mean? Like, And I know, I think he kind of was somewhat of a, a timid character. Oh, but for sure. He never felt... Similar with, uh, that I feel with Storm in these movies. They they both feel like... Muted? Yeah. Right? Like, uh, just not... Not impressive the way they should be. And part of it with Nightcrawler is he's new to the team at this point. So that makes a little more sense. But Storm, again, didn't feel like a strong character. And which is shocking to me every time. Um... Yeah, she was kind of boring. Yeah, well, because Storm is like second in command of the X Men, kind of like so. It's like Cyclops is the captain, and then it's Storm, and then it's Jean Grey. I believe is like kind of the structure. Okay, she's like a really strong character, and these movies don't make her that way. You never feel like, oh my goodness, these kids. <laughs> Um, yeah, so she never came across as like a super strong character. I don't know. What's your opinion about her? Um, I remember liking her more as a kid. Yeah. Like I thought she was cool. And now I'm like, eh, not, it's just kind of whatever. I feel like it takes too long for her powers to build up to what it needs to be. Mm. Like most other X-Men can like, there's a situation and boom, they can do this. They can do that. And hers is like. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna need five minutes to get this thing brewed up. Can everyone just stand where they're at? <laughs> I can hit you with lightning, or I could drop a tornado down. But you can't move because if you're moving, I'm gonna shoot like 500 tornadoes, and they're all gonna miss. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I think it is accurate-ish to her character that she because she doesn't create storms; she manipulates the weather. Right. And so she has to build the storm to be able to use it. No, I, I, I get, I get that. It's just, I don't find it very effective. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not, <laughs> I don't, I can't imagine. She would, I feel like she would be more like a more effective villain. Yes. Who had time Who to I, prepare. Yeah, exactly. Mm. No, I agree with um, that. But which they yeah, kind of do in apocalypse, but right. Um, well, yeah, so this one, Wolverine is, again, kind of the star of the movie, which makes the most sense. Um, he's on his journey to figure out what happened to him, 
you know, where all his memories went and all this stuff. He, I mean, Hugh Jackman is a solid actor and every, Oh, no, it's great. I haven't seen origins for a long time. It's been a while, but I think he's good in that too. I think the movie I just think, sucks. I think. Yeah. Um, oh. I like Cyclops in this one. I feel like they're, I mean, it's not in it a ton, but like even in that, that when he comes back, he's like, Hey, you know, my, or your gas tank is empty. He's like, well then go fill it up. Like they're every time they interact together, I think it's just, it's really, you know, true to the comics and true. Like it feels Good authentic. Dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jean gray again, it, she's a better character than like storm or anything like that but she feel, always feels kind of weird in these like they don't she doesn't live up to her potential yeah the all the women feel weak and i don't understand why you know, i feel like maybe besides rogue for i mean she's she doesn't have uh an amazing you know mutation but she uses it the best as she can yeah but she like her character is weak though. Rogue, Rogue being weak makes sense, right? Because she's young, she's lost, she's scared, she's like figuring out her powers. Jean Grey yeah. and Storm should be these really strong female characters in these movies, but they feel more like taking a back seat to Hugh Jackman. Yep. And like I don't, I don't necessarily disagree. Um, like I, I think Hugh Jackman is the star of these movies, and I think it's a wise choice. Yes. Like, like we said, he is the X Man. He is the X Man, but all these other characters should be portrayed as really strong, uh, like emotionally strong, and they don't. You don't. I don't feel like that comes across. <sighs> yeah, but I mean, maybe because most of them are supposed to be kids. Well, they're teachers. Well, yeah. The, okay, the the ones that we've named already. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have yeah, a problem no, I with. <laughs> I don't have a problem with the students being weak because, I, like I said, rogue, rogue being timid or whatever makes sense. Like, that tracks logically. But the leaders of the X Men should be these, you know, giants of personality yeah. that are facing these over like insurmountable odds right like they, they're just background characters yeah and that's it's frustrating. It, yeah okay so with it being x-men it should be more like an avengers movie yeah where everyone's a big equal parts character and not just th these are wolverine movies yeah I mean, all like, nine of them are you know all nine of them yeah are wolverine pretty movies. much uh, i would say that 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 Somewhat changes towards like uh, Days of Futures Past and, and Apocalypse. I think I would other I would, characters kind of are more forward and he's kind of more back. I would say Days of Future Past is a, a Wolverine movie. Apocalypse is less. You think so? Yeah, I mean it sends him back in time. He's the he's the entry point to everything. Yeah. Um the only one first class, he's just a cameo in it. That's the only one that kind Sorry, of takes no, a backseat. Okay, that's, that's what I meant. I meant first class, not yeah. future pass. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's that to me is a a Magneto and, and Professor X movie. Yeah, which I I love their dynamic too. The, oh, for sure. Uh, James McAvoy and I think I said it in the last Michael podcast. Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender, their dynamic is great. So it was uh, Ewan, Ewan McKellar and... and uh, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. And the bald and guy. And Liam Neeson. Um, what did you? What do you think about that? That scene uh, where he pulls the iron out of that guy and yeah. then uses it to escape. So Mystique drugs a guard. She finds out who's guarding Magneto. Drugs him and injects iron into his blood. Mm -hmm. And then he comes to check on Magneto to beat him up. And Magneto senses the iron in his blood and pulls it out. I, 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 it's kind of cool. Um, 
It's an interesting workaround, but it feels a little th- far stretched, far fetched. I feel yeah. like if you and like, because he pulled out three ball bearings essentially, right? Uh-huh. If you had that much iron in your blood, I think you would just die. I don't yeah. think you would, you know. But then, but then it turns into even more because he makes that plate that he stands on and also has more ball bearings to shoot. I think he's like reusing the ball bearings, isn't he? Like they're like boomerangs almost coming back. Well, what I mean is, yeah, initially when he pulls out the iron, it shows he's got the three. Yeah. But then he makes the metal plate, but he still has like the three ball bearings. So it's those in addition to the plate he's standing on. I know that he's reusing. Does he create the plate or does he pull it from somewhere else? Um, I thought he created it from the iron. I thought it, I thought he got it from somewhere else, but I'm not sure. Okay, maybe not. I I don't have to check. You but, won't check. You're not gonna. Don't lie to people. <laughs> I don't have to. Okay, check. I, I might check. You will definitely not check. Bet I'll check. Okay. I'll check what, how much are you gonna bet? I'll bet you. Five thousand dollars. Yeah, you're gonna give me five thousand dollars next podcast. No, because I'm gonna check. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. What do you think of it? The uh, iron in the blood. I liked it, but why didn't? I mean, you're, the person who set this all up was Mystique, mm-hmm. who can turn into anyone. Why didn't she just turn into that security guard? Yeah, and like take him. I well, I guess she would have to go through a metal detector and all that, but. No, yeah, it definitely seems like there was more simple ways to get it all across. But, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I did like uh, I did like the dynamic of having them all work together, of Magneto and the X-Men yes. coming together and, like, having to use each other to survive. Like, I thought that was cool. Um, and that's, I, I did care for the scene when uh it was magneto and rogue or not rogue sorry mystique being like mean girls over in the corner making fun of rogue's hair <laughs> that just felt really out of place for yeah me. oh we like what you've done with your hair <laughs> well like, thanks it's because you almost killed me well then cyclops was fighting Jean gray at one point and magneto's like this is not a lover's quarrel we want to get involved with and him and mystique ran off and I was like, that's a weird line. Yeah. Like, one, is there a lover's quarrel that you do want to get involved with? Because <laughs> that's just, I feel like that's a non-statement all around. Like, yeah. obviously, you don't want to get involved in any lover's say, quarrels. I don't involve myself with lover's quarrels. And, uh, like, I feel like that, that, that would have been a pretty easy rewrite of just to say something like, uh, let's let these lovers quarrel to themselves or something. You know what I mean? Like, the, right. Let's we, go find a different lovers quarrel to get involved in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It was, yeah, some of the lines are cheesy, but better than the first. The first is really bad. <coughs> the first has like the whole what happens to a toad when it gets struck by lightning. Same thing that happens to everyone else. And Storm. This one has up. a couple, though, like, uh, freaking pyro dude was like here i, I don't remember exactly what yeah. line it's 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 uh you know you, what i'm talking about you've heard about those Just dangerous mutants dangerous right mutants. i'm the worst well, I'm, like you're definitely not you're definitely <laughs> strong but you're not the worst no yeah he just makes fire he manipulates fire and i i did like them kind of him and iceman 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 <coughs> having I, that I, just just man ice Ice Moon, uh, having that conflict. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I think that's good because it, it's it goes it's, it's it works on a lot ice. of levels, right? Um, but I, I didn't really care for the actor who played Pyro in no, this he, one. He's he's garbage. Yeah, he was kind of weak. Um, I hate any. I I don't like to sit there and like fiddles with the lighter all the time. Like that would bother me so much. Yeah. I did like the look, the scene I, when I get it. in nah. the at the museum when the guy steals his lighter and then he sets him on fire and then Professor oh, yeah. X freezes everything and he's like uh-huh. the next time you think about showing off don't <laughs> and just like yeah. it very it felt very much like yeah you're in trouble <laughs> you know like it the 
Uh, Patrick Stewart is just is so good at Professor X. Just like uh-huh. he's, I can't imagine a better Professor X than Patrick Stewart. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, he looks like the character, and he comes across as this very he was stern, born to play Professor X. Yeah. I think he might Everything actually he did be. Everything in his life <laughs> led up to this point. <laughs> um, what else? Anything? What didn't you like about X two? Um, I didn't like Pyro. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of boring. Yeah. Yeah, it's and like, I don't know if that's because it's a boring movie or because I I I've seen it a lot and it's older, you know. So. Yeah, there's. I think part of it is knowing what the next six movies are. So there's just not a lot of stakes to this movie. You're just kind of like, yeah, you know, like, okay, this doesn't, this doesn't affect anything. There's no consequence from this movie. It's just going to get erased. So it doesn't really matter. Yep. And so I think that makes it hard to get excited about it. What do you think about Stryker? I, I really like that actor. I think he's great. I think Stryker yeah. in this one is kind of boring and he is and and I remember misguided. when I was younger for some reason I didn't like him. Uh-huh. I just thought I think maybe because I he's not a mutant so he was boring to me. Mm-hmm. But I think now and then just over the course of all these different movies I think he's a great villain. He the only thing I don't like about him is he doesn't they don't develop him very much and he feels very yeah. one note, you know, like just evil, right? He doesn't seem, um, he's no Thanos. Like, like we were talking about, uh, on the last one about X-Men two or X-Men one, I was saying that the villain, the best villain is the one that you're like, man, I, if only he was a good guy, right. With Magneto, yeah. like that's your desire. Uh, if he was a good guy, then it, you know, I, I would be happy to see that change. You don't have that at all with Stryker, right? It's like, I, oh, yeah. he's just a jerk. He needs to get his. If he was a good guy, he wouldn't bring anything to the team. Yeah. And so I, I, there's not a lot of development there with him, I think, is why I don't really care for him as a villain. Like Magneto, Loki, I don't know who else, maybe the Joker. Um, mm-hmm. Two Face and the Dark Knight, like all these guys are so likable, and you're just like, ah, if you like want them to change, you know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you feel it. You're like, oh, I, I, I just wish that they could, you know, get on the right page. Where when they're more just evil, it gets kind of boring. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it, I agree with that. Anything else? X2. Um Nah, not not really. Yeah. I like going back to Nightcrawler and his scenes. I like the scene where he teleports out of the, the, the jet when yeah. it's crashed or when it you know, busts open out. and then Yeah, and then teleports back. I just I he's just a cool character. It, uh Nightcrawler is the best character. And I again, I feel like he was so underutilized. Like to me, his his fighting style, where he like you know teleports into a kick and you know all this stuff, and just his yeah. ability to like move around and be quick and just to me, he feels like almost unstoppable. Um, oh yeah, you know like, but he just he just comes across as so boring. This, <laughs> and I I did like the. Him and Mystique have a moment where he's like, wait, you can be, you can look like anything and you choose to look like that. Why? And she's like, well, I shouldn't have to be different. And it's like, oh, that's a really, you know, powerful message that they get to, they get back to later, uh, like with first class. class. But yeah. And this is just like, they, they like touch on it for half a second and then kind of go away. Yeah. Um, another character that I, I did always like was I like Colossus a lot. Yeah, and they they never use him. They never use him. Yeah. Well, I think it's like a super pain <laughs> to do Colossus. 
Oh, I'm of, sure it is, but he just seems cool. Yeah. Like, especially when, okay, so that scene when, when Stryker's men are taking over the mansion and everyone's escaping. Yeah. And then, like, he's he's helping everyone because he's a, I, is he a student? Because he's, like, a yeah. much bigger and older than these other kids. I think at the time then, he was a student in this movie. Okay, so he helps him escape, and then Wolverine's about to go, and he's like, hey, he's like, I can help. And he's like, no. Like, all right then. <laughs> well, like, he, he, why not I mean, take all the help that you can get? Oh, he says take care of the kids. Is that what he said? Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he wants. He's like, well, the go. Pro- we're fine. If you can help, go protect the kids then, because they they're gonna need it. I did like that uh, attack on the school. I thought that was a good sequence. I thought showing how some of the kids would be able to escape and fight back, and how some of them right. would be unprepared and not re- like that. You know how. It was a lot of times when you have something where, you know, there's like a, people are trying to get captured or people are trying to capture other people. It's either an all or nothing type of thing Mm -hmm. or only one person gets captured and it's like a pivotal person who gets captured. This was like, Peter. (laughs) Yeah. This was, uh, you know, like half, like some of the weaker ones are going to get captured, you know, uh, the ones that have, useful abilities in that situation you can get away yeah but uh yeah x2 pretty good i think yeah from i mean it's good negative five to five is probably like a two i give it a two yeah i think i, think I gave x-men one a three so i'd say two yeah it, it's like right on the edge with x-men one to me like they're they feel very similar but i, I think x1 is a bit better I, I liked in this one that we get a lot more of like the Wolverine rage. Yes. Which is, I think is always some of the coolest stuff. Well, I just, but then it's so it's hard. So mild. Yeah. When you compare it to Logan, <laughs> because he's essentially like what you're showing me is he's swiping at these guys and like, they're going down, but like, there's no blood. So they're just getting scratched. Yeah. It's what you're. Pre- yeah. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> well, obviously I know they're not, but so Logan, fights the girl with the fingernail claws and that's yeah. all she does basically is just scratch his face yeah, yeah like there's not like you watch the movie logan and it's like man that's like you see him chopping limbs off and slicing heads there and, should be so many pieces of people yeah. around the world that he's fought just like <clears throat> like cubes of people <laughs> just like drax after he tries to get thanos yeah, exactly. Just yeah, perfect like uh, fillets of people. <laughs> well, because so in um, oh, it's so dumb. I think it, is it Origins when he's trying to fight with Gambit and he's slicing yeah. at the uh, the <laughs> the fire escape and he just like eats it up, just like and like the thing just disintegrates and disappears, mm-hmm. but that should be happening to people too. Like well, and they a fire escape is much harder than people. When he's fighting that girl, he, he swipes a couple times at like a metal railing. Yeah. And he just, he cuts through it like perfect chunks right out of it. Yeah. Like that should be arms and stuff. <laughs> they do really like the blade through the chest though. I mean, that's the, gotta have that. That's a staple wolverine move did i lose you sounds like i lost you i think you're gone did you unplug your mic or did your internet die i don't know where taylor went we're pretty much done with this episode anyways thanks for listening you can check us out on facebook like uh, follow us on twitter over on patreon for a dollar you get all all our episodes uh two weeks in advance and you can help decide who has to pay the punishment. We should be back next week with X3, which is, I think, one of the worst other than Origins. So that'll be an interesting conversation. But uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll be back soon.